Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, to the channel IT Simplified. I hope you're finding these videos useful and subscribing to the channel. In today's session on Azure, I'm here to talk about how you can deploy a host pool by using the Azure Resource Manager. So as you know that uh, WVD was uh, introduced and was uh, generally available in October of 2019. And since then, there have been a lot of changes. And just recently, a month ago, they have now uh, deployed, still in preview, they have now made it possible to use Azure Resource Manager or also known as ARM, uh, the deployment method, because uh, the way WDVD was deployed was all based on PowerShell. You have to provide permission to the Azure Active Directory, add the enterprise application, and uh, do a lot of stuff, create the tenant. So all those has been taken away and now you can deploy everything and manage actually everything from the Azure portal. And that is what the uh, ARM deployment is. So that is what we're gonna look into. And just as a prep work for this deployment, I've already created a resource group with the name WVDRG, it's in a VNet. It already has a domain controller with the name DC505. It has an IP address of .4. And what we'll be doing is we'll be deploying our host pool in the resource group with the name HPRG. The name of my domain is Tag Data Canada. Uh, so this part is already provisioned. I don't want you to sit and wait and go through all that. We have done this before numerous time in our previous videos. So you can go and check that in case you want to. But what we'll be concentrating is we'll be concentrating on creating the host pool right from the Azure portal. So let me just flip over to my Azure subscription. And as you can see, that I already have a resource group, the name WVDRG, and it already has a domain controller, domain services, all those things are already deployed. The name of my machine is DC505. So the first thing that you want to do in order you want to test this is you want to just uh, register for the uh, the service. So what you can do is you can just go to subscription, pick the subscription under which you want to deploy. And if I go under the resource providers under settings and do a search for desktop, Virtualization, it should take me, and I just need to register. So you can see right now I'm registered. In your case, you just need to select this, and you just need to register that. That will be the first step in order you want to test this out. So I've already done this. So you can just click on this and uh, go to the next step. So what we want to do now is we want to now deploy the host pool. So I'm going to type in Windows Virtual Desktop and right over here. I can pick this and here you see, this was not there before a month ago. So that is what, what we call an Azure Resource Manager deployment because you get all the control pane. You can control the host pool, application pro, workspace, users, everything can be managed from here. So let's do this. Let's go and click on create a host pool. Pick your subscription under which you want to deploy. The resource group, I already have one which I created with the name HP resource group or host pool resource group. You need to give the name for your host pool. Pick the location. When it comes to host pool type, very similar to the pre, uh, previous uh, uh, deployment option, you still get the personal or the pool. So personal will have a one-to-one -one, uh, kind of uh, uh, a commitment so basically every user will have a dedicated machine for them when it comes to pool as the name suggests that a pool of machine will be shared among pool of resources so if i deploy say three four five or ten machine it will be shared maybe between 50 100 150 depending on my environment now for this deployment i'll pick the pool option i can pick maximum session limit so basically what is the maximum limit that a, a maximum number of user can uh, can access a single machine. So depending on, again, what kind of environment you want, you can change this number. So what I'm saying is that I will have maximum session limit of five on a single VM. For load balancing, you can either choose a bet first or a depth first. So breadth first will be uh, will be like a round robin. So first person will go to the first machine and second on and so on, right? When it comes to depth first, so basically 
what happens is uh, whatever maximum session limit I have specified, so in this case, five. So once the number of users reaches that limit, so one VM will reach five session at the same time, then the sixth person will go to the second VM and then five uh, sessions on the second machine. And then depending upon how many machines you have. Now for this demonstration, I'll pick the breadth first. I'll go to next. I need to add the virtual machine. I can add it right now or I can do it later too, but let's go and say yes. My resource group is selected, my virtual machine location. I can pick the size of my virtual machine. So let's go and uh, for this demonstration, I'm just gonna pick B1MS, so accept. You can specify how many machines you want. I'll just pick one. And for the name prefix, I'll pick ITS, so this will be in front of the VM. So for example, the I have one VM, so there'll be ITS VM, ITS one VM, ITS two, like, like that. I can create my own image and upload to the storage block, or I can use the image from the marketplace. So I'll pick that from the marketplace. And there are three options. You can either use a Windows 10 multi-session, you can also use a server operating system. I will use Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session with Office 365 Pro Plus. At this stage, I can pick what kind of storage I want on this machine. I need to deploy this uh, in the virtual network, which has access to my domain controller. So just going back to my uh, machine, uh, just my diagram actually. So the host pool that I have should have access to the uh, domain controller because they still need to be domain joined. So make sure that you deploy that on the same virtual network or even if it's under the separate virtual network, there should be a VNet peering. Now I will deploy in the same virtual network under which my uh, domain controller is. So that is what it is, AD VNet and AD subnet. I can specify if I want to give a public IP for this machine or I can also say no. So depending upon if you want, so let's say I want to give a uh, public IP, generally under the production environment, you won't give. And I want this to be static. You can specify the network security group. You can have a basic or advanced. You can open the public inbound port. You can specify the domain or the unit if you want. Uh, in my case, I don't have an OJU. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give the credential to which I want this AD to join. So the person who has the credential so that they can join these machines to my domain. So I'm gonna provide that. Go to the next tab, which is workspace. I need to register my desktop app group. So I'll say yes, you can do this later on too, but uh, while we are here, let's do that. I need to give the name for the workspace. Say okay, and now that's another which is difference from the previous way we used to deploy it in which we need to deploy the tenant. So as you can see that we don't need to deploy any tenant or tenant group, and that has been replaced by the workspace. So that's uh, another difference if you have uh, noticed from the previous way of deployment. I can also specify the tag, click on review and create. Validation passed and click on the create button. Now this process will take some time. So what I'm going to do is I will pause the video and resume it once it gets done. Welcome back friends. So as you can see the deployment has completed. So with this we have uh, deployed the host pool. Right, so the host pool is also deployed. So if I can go back to the WVD service, which I have pinned, you will see that under the host pool, I have ITS, that's the name I have given, my resource group, the location, and I have the application group, the workspace, I can manage the user. So you, you, you see that, that's the difference which was missing in the previous way of deployment. And that is what Azure Resource Manager, because you get the complete control pane. Otherwise, the things that you have to do manually 
and uh, actually you have to do actually through PowerShell uh, and you have to give consent uh, through Azure Active Directory at the enterprise application, the WBD service in that. Even if you have to add the machines, you have to do through do th that through the PowerShell, adding the users, creating the tenant and all those kind of stuff. But everything you can manage that uh, through now the portal and that is what Azure Resource Manager deployment is. It makes the deployment and the management much more easier. So this was a quick deployment of a WVD through New Way, which is an Azure Resource Manager. In the next video, we'll see further what we can do with this uh, management option. Hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.